Welcome to Land Academy. This is the cash flow from Land Show, where we show you how to buy unwanted vacant land and sell it for more on the internet. I'm Steve Butella. I'm Jill DeWitt. We, we are, are your hosts. hosts. With over 15,000 completed transactions, we are the experts in this niche land flipping business. We hold a drawing to win a free property every month. Enter to win by reviewing this show on iTunes and downloading our free ebook at landacademy.com. All right, let's get this show started. This is Jill DeWitt for Land Academy, and this is the Cash Flow from Land Show. Today, I get to interview Stephen. I love it when I get to do this. About his recently posted and now award winning, award winning, yeah, okay, <laughs> blog. Can you believe that? I know. I can't believe it. Your blog is called Five Good Rental Houses Will Feed Your Family for Generations, and I am excited to hear more about this, as I'm sure our listeners are. I'm excited that you're the host welcome, of this show, Steven. because when you're the... <laughs> what? I said, welcome, Stephen. <laughs> I'm so excited when you do the show. You're the host. It's like half the work for us, for me specifically. I'm good with it, too. I kind of like being in charge of this now and then. Good. It's, it's good. It's fun to change up. So I got to dive in. What what's going on with this blog and why is it so successful? You know, I was talking to a colleague. Well, he's a, a direct colleague in this business, Seth Williams, and and every once in a while, you know, for and it, and we, there's no I have no control over it. A blog, you know, you write blogs and blogs and blogs, and then one of them just goes to the moon. It's incredibly popular for whatever reason. I, I wish I had more control over it because I would do it every time. But um, you know, this has just happened to be one of those one of those blogs that everybody. Uh, read and it, it kind of it went sort of not completely viral but sort of viral in the little niche that we're in all over the internet about it with land and real estate so seth uh said the same thing probably once or twice a year he writes when he has no idea which one it's going to be but it, it just goes to the moon so this That's one's called great. five good rental houses will feed your family for generations and maybe it's the title i don't know we well, you know it's interesting too because uh, i remember hearing you and seth talk about it one time and he said something about it might be two years down the road, too, that yeah. sometimes, you know, yeah. he wrote a blog a long time ago, then all of a sudden it gets all this attention. So what's funny is yours is it's two days or, you know, I mean, how is it even a week old? Yeah, it's uh, about 14 days old. Okay. Just, you know, just for the listeners, I put a link or I will put a link uh, right directly in the text portion of wherever you, this podcast is syndicated. So. It gets syndicated in Stitcher and iTunes and I think a couple other places. They'll all have a direct link if you want to read the read the pod, uh, read the blog while you're listening or afterward or whatever. Perfect. That's awesome. So, can you give me the gist of it? What 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 is this blog really about? This blog is very specifically about real estate investment. So, I started I, like every blog, you know, and I'm sure you go through this too, Jill. Actually, I'm not sure, but I'd love to hear about it, how you write blogs because I don't think we've ever really talked about it. But, you know, you sit down with a concept and uh, every time I sit down to write a blog, I'm like, the premise is why isn't everybody doing this? It's just really simple. So, and I come at it from all different kinds of angles. For us, it's land, obviously. You know, we buy and sell land. It may, it's always made sense to me since the 90s, you know, but but owning five rental houses and kind of going slow while you still have your regular job and accumulating one or two or three houses um, or five houses in this case over a few years just seems like second nature. You know, I mean, you and I have had several rental houses, Jill. Mm -hmm. I mean, we don't, I'll, I'll get it out of the way right now. I don't have any rental houses right now um, because I keep getting blind offers from people that are just ridiculously more than I ever paid. So, you know, right. I, I always... When I get an offer on a rental house that I've had for a while to to purchase it, you know, for those of you who don't know, if you have a rental house and it's rented, it, it's now all of a sudden usually way more expensive or way more valuable, uh, valuable yeah, right. price wise than if it was just sitting there vacant or ready, you know, just for for the end user. To, so what happens is you buy a house, you clean it up. Maybe Jill and I have done this several times. Buy a house, clean it up, uh, get it rented out. And then everybody comes out of the woodwork because you've done all the hard work and exactly. they just want to, you know, they just want to buy it. There's a tenant and a lease and they don't have to think about it. Last one Jill and I did was uh, in, a, in a not not the best neighborhood in South Phoenix. <laughs> we have, these are the numbers. We bought it for 25000 bucks. I think we cleaned the carpet. 
I think so. I and remember a that. Couple we, things. There were like things broken in the fence that we had our guy come out and just, you know, the backyard fix a few things that were falling down. Wasn't much. Got it rented out. Uh huh. And then uh, sold it for $75,000. So and the math in my head was, all right, so how long is it going to take for me to make 50000 bucks in rental income? And it was a long time. So, right. you know. Exactly. So, so the what's the whole um, process? I mean, you kind of just gave me the big picture. Yeah. I mean, you kind of get into a little bit, but so go back to your blog and okay. give me the process for the blog of start to finish, get to this five rental houses um, explanation. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. So, you know, we all want financial security, all of us. You know, you would not be listening to this podcast if you were all done and, and, and you know, a, a couple of skyscrapers and that was over. We all want financial security. Uh, single family residential investments as a real estate investment in general is maybe my least favorite real estate investment. I love land, and that's why we do it, and there's apartment buildings are great. But for whatever reason, there's just a, a ton of people who are have a connection with investing in houses. I think it's rooted in the house they grew up in, and they watch their parents make a bunch of money, or, or whatever. I don't know. Who knows why? Everybody's got a different reason for what they choose to make money in in real estate. This blog is really about why that fails, you know, because a, a disproportionate amount of people that get into it buy a rental house. I think they don't have enough education or haven't taken the time to really look into what's involved in that. And so that's really what this this uh, blog is about. So I, I, in detail, describe why it fails. And then after that, I describe how to do it so that it can really work for you. And that you only really need five or six of them or three of them, depending on your situation, to not ever really have to go to work anymore. Are you not going to tell us or we're going to have to read the blog? Is that kind of what you're saying? I, do, I can read. I have it up on my screen right now. I can read it to you if you'd like. Okay. No, no that's good. All right. All right. Let's, we'll, just, we'll just dance around. Right, so, dance on along the top here. Here's the answer to the question. Why does this fail? Why do rental houses as an investment fail for so many people? Because there's a real estate agent involved. There's a lender involved. There's a, a home inspector involved. There's mortgage insurance involved and on and property managers and on and on and on. So you got, I read a blog one time recently uh, on bigger pockets about how you have to get your team in place. So you're the <sighs> investor and you get your team, you get your manager, your manager in place and your right. contractor. That's the worst advice I've ever heard. Do the stuff yourself. Right. You know, if you're trying to quit your job or trying to be a passive investor in real estate, which is what we are, Jill and I are. Right. You know, you don't want to work for somebody else the rest of your life. Learn how to do this stuff. Exactly. Don't hire an agent. You'll never know what's going on. By the way, you won't know where your money's going to. Well, that's sometimes. what that's really what the, the first part of the blog is all about. Like, you know, this is why it fails because you're paying all these people to do all this stuff. And Correct. Real estate, you could do. Real estate agents are famous, famous for saying, oh, no, no. The seller <laughs> pays the fee. The seller pays my fee. You don't pay my fee. Which cracks me up every time I hear it. It's coming you, out you somewhere. Pay it. somewhere. And the mortgage broker, same thing. You don't pay anything. The bank You're paying pays more you. for the house because the they're pays. backing out the fees, whatever all. it is. You it's pay true. everything. You pay for everything. Without without you, the buyer or the investor, um, you know, the deal's not gonna happen. Okay. Okay, so I got the gist of what's going on now. <laughs> can anyone do this? Can any, anybody can do this. Anybody uh, who has the ambition can absolutely do this, yes. Do I have to be really, really smart to be able to figure no. it? You just said I don't need a team. Mm -hmm. I need to do it all. Oh, nope. my gosh. That means I have to act as my investor. I have to be the real estate person. I've got to be the acquisitions person. I've got to, um, you know, be in charge of finding the tenant and all of that. Can I do all this by myself? Yes. Cool. You know, these, Jill, you and I are famous in other circles for saying everybody just wants the truth, right? And that's how I write these blogs. And I know you do, too. Mm -hmm. I know you talk to a lot more people on the phone it's per true. day than I do. They just want the truth. Here's it's the true. truth. Learn how to buy undervalued real estate by sending out direct mail. That's what this blog is about. Learn how to do that. It's going to take months. It's not going to take 30 seconds. Once you've mastered that, you got a good data source. And we have all the answers in our programs for all this stuff. We've done it 15,000 times. Once you know how to buy undervalued real estate, let's say you don't have a dollar. And you send out a bunch of mailers. And you get all these people calling you back who only own the houses. And they're calling you back. And you know. They want to sell your house. They want to sell their house really quickly for twenty or forty thousand dollars. Then it's really below its value. Then find some people, and there's tons of them in your neighborhood. That's what this blog is about. Who want? Who are dying to buy houses that are undervalued? Like you, you can provide. So you, now you're learning how to buy 
to source undervalued real estate, mm-hmm. then complete the transaction with these with the investors that you found. Collect 10, 15, 20 grand per unit, accumulate enough cash, then go buy your own rental house for cash. Mm-hmm. Now you don't have a lender, a property manager, a real estate agent, or any of that stuff, and you have a lifelong skill. Mm-hmm. That's why this blog is so so mm-hmm. uh, popular because it provides all the answers. And it's the truth. Do you know what? You're you're so right. I didn't know that. I it's funny you say that because years ago my brother was starting his it had and sold a day trading company, and I, I was scratching my head going, "How did you come up with all this money?" He's like, "Jill, it's super easy. The money's out there. If you've got a really good business model and a good business plan and everything. Finding the investors and the money is the easiest part of He's it. He's right. I had no. I did. I didn't get it back then, and yeah. I get it now. And it's true. And you and I are those yeah. people too. I mean, right. now people can come to us and go, "All right, here's this deal." I mean, we're all crazy not to complete this, you know. And we're all running to the bank because we want to complete it. You know, that's easy. You're right. Yeah. So at the end of the blog, what? So the, here's the gist of it: Learn how to buy undervalued real estate using direct mail. Mm-hmm. Then uh, save a bunch of money while you're, you know, because you didn't, you don't have to start with any money. Save a bunch of money while you're doing this. That when you're shoving these deals over to the investors, or they're usually like land flip guys. You know, you've if you go on Craigslist and you type in stuff like uh, we buy houses or um, you know the ugly houses model, all of that. You you want to you want an arsenal of those guys in your back pocket, not an arsenal like five. You want five guys in your back pocket where you. When, once you find a, an undervalued piece of real estate, they can step in, close the deal, and pay you. Mm-hmm. Or you can source it together. There's lots of different ways to cut into it, but the blog covers all that stuff in great detail. But all you have to do is maybe 10 of those deals, mm-hmm. less than one a month. Yeah. Less than one a month. So in a year, now you're paying cash for a house. Exactly. So if you make 10000 bucks on each one of those, which is actually a pretty low fee, uh, you've accumulated a hundred grand, so you go pay cash for a house. And now... So, and here's another thing that I really think that this is one of the reasons that this blog is so successful. When you pay cash for an asset, which is all we do in our land business, but when you can't pay cash for a house, all kinds of stuff can happen. Even if you're learning, you got a bad tenant, uh, man, you lost your job. I mean, when you don't have to make that mortgage payment and there's no real monthly expenses associated with the house, you know, it can stay vacant for a while and you can afford it. Or you can sell it really quickly if you have to without checking with the bank first. You know, you're just you're in so much more control. Very true. And I, I think most new investors don't know this kind of stuff. I think you're right. You know, they can't wrap their head around it for some reason. They just don't think it's possible, and it's very possible. So, are you text messaging? I am not. <laughs> <laughs> I am not. I am totally paying attention. You know, I'm one of serious. the reasons that Jill and I I'm do, you do well together <laughs> because I'm like, I'm too wordy and brainy. Oh, yeah. I know I am. And Jill is too like skip along the top, you know. Can I go now? Can I go the, now? <laughs> to her sitting in an umbrella, skipping along the top like she's in a 1940s musical. That's Jill's whole life. And mine's like a I'm a mechanical engineer with a slide rule all upset. And we just meet somewhere in the middle, and I guess it works some, for some reason. I don't know. It does work. We compliment each other. I think you just closed your eyes a little bit. I think I did. <laughs> Am I all monotone? I think I did. Is it all like monotone? Do you know what I zeroed in on? I'm looking at this. I'm looking at my notes on the computer here, and I'm like, you know what? You kind of spelled my last name wrong. (laughs) So it's okay. Did I really? It's a capital W, but that's okay. It's a minor thing. That's just what I was focusing on because you were deep in a discussion there with yourself. So I kind (laughs) of let you go. (laughs) Deep in discussion with yourself. Boy, if you know, if we had a guest, that would be the whole. Uh, you know how we name, we name title the show. Title the show. We have guests. We uh, five good rentals. Steve's discussion with himself Steve's about a discussion with five good rental houses that will feed your family for generations. I'm gonna go make lunch. You keep talking. I'll come back later. <laughs> Great show, Steve. <laughs> okay, all right, all right, all right. Okay, I have another question though. We kind of lead. We kind of led into this, and and so I know a lot of this. You're just gonna recap, but. Tell me again, why isn't everyone doing this? It just doesn't make sense that they're not. It's a no-brainer to me. Yeah, a couple reasons. I think uh, I think everybody gets real jacked up about it and excited in the beginning, and then they find out it's just, it's a little bit of work. What's, what know? is teaspoonful of work, like a Seth teaspoon, Williams said? Yeah. <laughs> See, Seth it's Williams, a, a teaspoonful teaspoon of work, work in reality. <laughs> Gee, boy, that's, you know, 
versus getting up and all the commuting that you do and the driving and then this and then that. Let's all think about this, everyone. <laughs> I think if if most people, uh, the vast majority of people, if they just put 40 hours in, just one work week of working for somebody else, and I'm not saying go quit your job and put a work week in for yourself. I'm saying keep your job, put 40 hours in, which is, uh, I guess, the like weekends. the weekends, right? Yeah. Which what is that like? Four. You weekends? could do. You could do. You could do it in one week. Do your evenings and a couple weekend days. There's your forty hours. Yeah. So right. Okay. Yeah. So uh, maybe forget about football for a month or whatever. You know. I don't know. Whatever. Mm-hmm. And uh, do. I think you would be shocked and amazed at how much stuff you can. How much more efficient it is to work for yourself. And you know the the what you're going to learn and. It's just, you know, answering your own questions. Uh, YouTube is just an amazing resource. Biggerpockets.com is a massive resource. I, I don't mm-hmm. get paid by anybody anybody like that. I'm just, I'm just saying those are two resources I use every day, mm-hmm. even at this le- at the level where we are. So, yeah, you know, you have to learn how to use data. And you need to know how to, uh, I think that's actually the topic of our next podcast, is how to manipulate or use data mm-hmm. in, a, at, in a mailer, in a direct mail campaign, to, to find the people who are just dying. There's right now, wherever you're sitting or whatever you're doing, there's tens of thousands of people that want to sell their assets. Probably more than that. Probably several hundred thousand people who are dying to get a letter from someone like you that says, it, "Forget about price. Right. I just want to cash out of this asset. I don't want to call a real estate agent. I don't want to go through all the six month process of selling this thing. Mm-hmm. I just want you to write me a check and meet me in a coffee shop down the street, and I'll sign my stuff over to you." Mm-hmm. That's what Land Academy is, right? Right. I'm calling the convenience store of real estate. Here I am. You know. So to answer your question, yeah, I think anybody can do this if you have the right ambition. Okay. I know that we have many, many, many members now, Joe, at Land Academy. And there's probably, I bet, 20 or so, maybe more than that, that are really ambitious and they're killing it. Yeah. We also have, on the other end, some people I think that probably... Bought the information that we, or bought our one of our programs. And, and they haven't uh, got to it yet. Yeah. They're, they're letting life get in the way. And yes. Or they're, they're watching too much football. I'm just thinking, <laughs> you probably lost a few people here. Forget about football for <laughs> a month. <laughs> that football comment was for you. If you if, if the six listeners that are listening don't know this, Joe is maybe the biggest football crazy fan there ever Not was. that crazy. <laughs> it's pretty crazy, Not love. crazy. Compared to you, crazy. <laughs> I'm a Saints fan. So right. that's a whole nother show. All right, so where – okay, I bought into this. I I get it. I understand it. I read the blog. Where do I start? What's the first step? The first step in any of this with Land Academy and everything else is to get some good education, and I say this in the blog. Spend a couple of months researching a market that really works for uh, rental houses or for house flipping or whatever because not everyone does. You know, and it's too – every. And a lot of people, I can hear everybody saying now, a couple of months. Yeah, a couple of months. Spend a couple of months in your spare time researching markets. And then spend, while you're doing that, research how to send out a, a mailer data. We, how, to send, how to use mailer data to send out a direct mail campaign. Do not do the following. You're going to waste your time and you're going to get discouraged and it won't work. Do not drive for dollars. Oh, yeah. I was hoping you were going to say if, that. <laughs> if you know what drive for dollars is, then you know why it's a waste of time. You know how Joe feels about it. <laughs> <laughs> you don't don't know what driving for dollars is. This is what it is in 30 seconds or less. Getting in your car, driving around some neighborhood. Maybe the house is vacant or there's boards on the windows or you're, you're choosing the, maybe the worst assets you can possibly choose. Writing down the address, going to the county, doing all this research and, all that, and wasting all this time and then sending them a letter or somehow contacting the owner or whatever. Don't do that. Mm-hmm. You can do all of that sitting in front of a computer with mailer data and you don't need any formal education or any of that stuff, and you're not wasting any time. Yeah, the eight hours you spend driving for dollars, you could have spent, you could have reached 5,000 people in a mailer. Yeah, instead, Next. Of, instead of reaching 12 or <laughs> right. some number. Yeah. It's the 21st century. You don't need to do this in your car. Don't need to do that anymore. That's not to, and you know what? I don't know of any uh, person, any, any uh, realtor nowadays that, doesn't agree with the fact that by the time it hits the MLS, it's not a good deal anymore. If you're doing a flipping thing, by the time it hits the MLS, it's too late. So yeah, you so need to be reaching these sellers bef- 
as they're thinking about selling, and that's why mailing it is a great time. They may be just considering the selling thing, and your letter came along. All right, next month when we're going to sit down and talk about it because it's January, whatever, your letter is going to be right there on their desk. Yeah, I mean, we've said it a million times on the air. We we get calls from people from the letters we've sent in the 2000s, you know, because, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so there's a, a few ways to fail at this, and that's kind of what the in, in that blog too. I think that's what wakes everybody up. Buy, you just nailed it, Jill. Buying a property out of the MLS is the absolute wrong thing to do. You're paying at or above market for an asset, and that's silly. And you don't learn anything, and it's easy, and it's the easy way out. And that's why I think a lot of people fail at this. Mm-hmm. It's the SFR single family residential piece. Mm-hmm. I think uh, people fail even if they if they do listen to our advice and they send out a mailer, they send the wrong mailer out. They send out a colored letter mailer or they send out um, a postcard a postcard, or I they send those. out a, some kind of threatening notice of, oh, my God, you're going to be in foreclosure or whatever. Yeah. Another big reason that piece of people fail, even if they get past all of that, is they send the mailer to the wrong person. You know, right. they send it to a, to when you when you have a house that you put one percent down on and it's the third year of ownership, you have no say in how much you sell your own house for the bank does. So you're wasting a, the price of a stamp in your effort if you send letters to people who have a really high loan to value. And there's we teach all this. There's very simple ways to to get those people out of your data so they don't get any they don't hear from you. What you want is to, you want to send a letter to somebody who doesn't have a mortgage on their house. And it's really easy. If you go to landedacademy.com, we teach all this stuff. Love it. Any last parting um, thoughts on this or points you want to you wanna hit home for our listeners? Because this is such a hot topic right now. Yeah, learn to do all this stuff yourself. Okay. You know, I, I say in the blog, uh, don't hire a home inspector. Everybody, I don't care who you are, know somebody mechanical. I mean, maybe you know a handyman. I literally say in the blog, pay the guy in beer. Everybody this wants a couple of This is because I'm not using a bank is why. Because a bank might require one. Yeah. yeah, this is assuming we're doing this all right and you're paying cash for something. That's right. And when you have an investor with you paying cash or however you're doing it, you can you could do this stuff yourself. This is very true. Yeah, you always want to check the asset out that you're, you're about to spend a bunch of money on. Right. So, and if you're not a big, if you're not a, you know. Pay the guy in beer. <laughs> I say that right in the blog. You did? Yeah. I gotta read your stuff. Yeah, maybe you should have read, <laughs> read the blog. Maybe I should have read the blog before I did the interview. <laughs> See what I mean? Skip along the title. <laughs> I know what it's about. I got it. <laughs> read the title. I clearly know what this is. <laughs> you ever see that movie where it's uh, the the girl from Sex in the City? What's her name? The actor, the, Sarah Jessica yeah, Parker. She did this movie with. Uh, yes. And she's like, she does eighteen things at once. She's like a mom yeah. and a full time yeah. marketing VP or something like that. And it, like, I don't know how she does it or something like that. Anyway, like she that. and her husband or her fiance, they have to get they get they live in Manhattan. She's real all successful, and they get they have, for whatever reason they have to go to Montana and live on this ranch because they're yes. somebody's chasing them. Yes, and they're all arguing and everything. And Sam Elliott owns the ranch, and he's like, you know, men are from Mars and women are from Venus. And she looks at him and says. You read that book? And he says in a cowboy kind of way, I read the title. <laughs> and that's all he needed to read. <laughs> that sounds he like got, me. It was a perfectly titled book. You know what? I have never read that book. I don't know if you have, but I kind of read the title and I, I get it. Yeah, I don't think I've ever read the book. Five good rental houses will feed your family for generations. Now I don't need to read anything else. <laughs> I get it. Well, thank you, Stephen. <laughs> I really appreciate that. And thank you for sharing all of this with us. And I think that... Uh, I can't wait to see the response because I think this is going to help everybody who read that um, blog put a little put it a little more in perspective. So, the next episode we are going to talk about mailer data. We just spent some time talking about you know how do we get started? Do it right from the very beginning. Do it yourself, by the way, and it starts with good mailers. So, in the next episode, we're going to talk all about the true value of mailer data. Thank you, Stephen. Thanks. Thanks for hosting. Oh, you're welcome. All right. Let's go buy some property. Jill got a message today and it said, I think you guys didn't turn the microphones off. <laughs> Did you mean to say that stuff? <laughs> and I'm like, I'm kind of laughing. Like, Did you mean to gossip about the person that you just had on the show? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <gasps> because we're all about telling the truth here. Right. Everybody wants the truth. It's kind of fun. And I hope they do it about us. That's what I think too. It's totally great. It's all it's all good stuff. 
So I'm never going to say anything, you know, I'm just going to bring it down to go, all right, we just got off the phone with X. Here's our take on it and the good stuff, the not good stuff. And like you said, the truth. I'm a guest professor in this class uh, for uh, this entrepreneurial class at NIU, Northern Arizona University. And I said, the last time I did this, the whole thing, I said, everybody just wants the truth. You know, we're, we live in this world where we're, we buy stuff and we're there disappointed. We're, it's acceptable to be disappointed in the whole thing. Like when's the last time you ever heard somebody go like, go to a, one of these real estate things, late night real estate things on TV, you know, and right. they go to the thing, they go in a hotel right. and they come back and say, Oh, I, that was the greatest thing I've ever seen. Right. I got completely got my money's worth. I bought all the stuff. It works. And now I don't have to work anymore. And I'm making a ton of money. You know what? You're right. And when you think about it, how do they do more than one of those shows? I don't get it either. Because Jill. everyone, it seems like, oh, God. I mean, they, you know, the whole I walked in and on my lunch break, I'm supposed to be upping my credit limits and all that silly stuff. Yeah. I mean, how many red That's flags? Why don't why aren't, at that moment? Why aren't you asking for a refund and walking out the door? Because if you do that enough, then they're going to get it right. So that, I hope. To finish my thought, the vast majority, if not every single person that has joined Land Academy, has had has said, "Thank you. This is finally the truth. I can mm-hmm. see that." I go to successplant.com. All these other people that have already done the that are going through the thing are buying and selling property and making money. Yep. So that finishes that thought. I'm not putting ourselves. I'm completely removing ourselves from this silly little over late night TV thing. Okay. But, you know, tell, please, I want you to tell that story about this. So Joe was talking to this new member on the phone and he said, you know, I went to one of these shows. Mm-hmm. I went to one of these, uh, uh, you know, go to downtown to the Hilton and learn how to flip houses shows. Mm-hmm. And please say what that guy told you. About the credit card limits. Thing oh, the- my gosh. Yeah, he sat through the whole thing, too. He's like, I, I couldn't believe it. The first thing that they had us do was um, sit down, figure out what our credit limits are on our credit cards. And they even gave us a script to call the credit card companies and talk to them about upping their credit limit so they could afford to buy into whatever this next level was. Because even in that weekend-long, however many thousands of dollars environment that it costs, they weren't going to get all their answers. How can that be? I know. What if you went on a date with a guy and you, and you got to the middle of <laughs> the date? This is going to be good. The I, middle of the date. I like this. And he said, Jill, you seem like a nice person and you seem pretty talented. I want you to call your credit card company. I'm going to take you out to dinner again, but I want you to call your credit card company and up your limit because I think you need to pay. <laughs> what the hell? You'd I run know. out of there. Any woman exactly. would. Exactly. That's really so funny. why isn't that a red flag for, or maybe it's just a numbers thing. You get 500 people in there, three of them do it, and that's it. I don't know. Maybe we're really underpriced. <laughs> I, know, I know we're underpriced. <laughs> maybe that's it. We well, you know I feel bad because we're give, we are we uh, we we are very 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 honest, and that's you know what I'm not going to change a thing. No. That's the bottom line. That's just who we are. Once once folks get to know us and they find us, I think the hardest thing is finding us. If you're listening to this, you found us. <laughs> so great. But uh, that's the thing. Once people have found us, they've all said, oh, my gosh, thank you. Where have you guys been? I'm sorry I didn't wait for you. You know, whatever. Hey, that's okay. Here we are now. Hey, here's a question. Of all the stuff that we've sold or all the pack, the programs that we have we have sold so far, because we're, we're in this mood now because we're at the end of the year and we're Ooh. looking at our numbers and stuff. What percentage do you think purchased other people's um, <gasps> education programs directly in our niche? Directly. That's a good question. I'm asking. This ballpark, do you think? Gosh, I'm going to go with uh, more than 25%. I'm going to go closer to 70. You think, you think yeah. that high? Yeah, it could be 50. Because a, a lot of our members are not new to the concept. They came to us because they weren't getting it done. With other people. Uh-huh. That's right. I, I think it's at least no, half. No, you know, you're right. It's probably closer to 50. I was trying to be polite, I guess. <laughs> Okay. We signed up a military guy yesterday, and he, uh, his comment was, why would I buy, what was his comment? Oh, yeah, my guy in Japan. Uh, his thing was, I asked, I, I sent him an email confirming everything and just double checking because it's an APO, the shipping address, and making sure it would get to the right place. And he's, and I said, by the way, how did you hear about us? He said, you know, I was researching, you know, Mark Podolsky, and then I found you guys. He said, why would I buy from the student? Why would I learn from the student when I can learn from the teacher? You know, kind of thing. And I'm like, yeah, oh. Mark was my first student. And Mark's a good guy, but That's I think a great guy. I'm, I'm hearing that there's some holes in his program. So no. it's fine. It's good. You know, it's all good. 
All right. Let's go buy some property. Oh, we let's do go do buy. That? Let's go buy some. What are we buying? Let's buy some rental homes and help feed some families. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's go buy. Can you imagine? Okay. <laughs> Can you imagine if, uh, oh, like, uh, it's gonna keep on going and hosts, going. It's like the generator bunny talk show hosts, uh, you know, interviewed a guy that just wrote a best selling book, and then, but they never read the book, they just kind of talked to him and said, How'd you write the book? <laughs> Where were you? <laughs> That's what's happening here, Jill. You, you didn't read my 30, 30 word blog, I <laughs> more than 30 words, and I'll go read it. You know, let's go so I can read it right now. Okay, all right. We hold a drawing to win a free property every month. Enter to win by reviewing this show on iTunes and downloading our free ebook at landacademy.com. If you want to get involved or you need more information about our profitable, niche real estate operation, call 480 467 0359. You just might get Jill at the other end of the line. Landacademy.com. You are not alone in your real estate ambition.